only you had all heard our conversations before, all your answers would have been covered. That's right. Right. Yeah, we would have covered everything. That's right. Oh, well. <laughs> well, here we are on our third video as we uh, learn more about the Lord's Supper, Communion, Eucharist, all these different names for this beautiful sacrament. And um, again, Pastor Matt Knauss, Pastor Bob Hiller. And if you have this video, you're probably familiar with who we are, but you know, at some point, maybe you share it with a friend that wants to know. So it's always good that we get to know each other. Uh, third video here, and we are talking about real presence and other denominations today. So first off, can we review what the Lord's Supper is? Let's start with the prayer, and yeah, we'll get into it. Absolutely, good right, idea. I'll go for it here. Father, thank you for this time. We pray, Lord, now that as we discuss the Lord's Supper, that you would guide our conversation, uh, you would bless us, and Lord, you would reveal your truth to us so that we may receive this sacrament in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, sorry, now go ahead. No, nah, it's okay, same question. Uh, let's, can we review what the Lord's Supper is? Yeah, so what we saw in the last video, uh, with, which Pastor Matt explained so well for us, is that the Lord's Supper is Christ's body and blood, and we like to say it this way, in, with, and under the bread and wine. And what does it mean, in, with, and under? It just means he's really there. That when you take that bread and you take that wine, you are receiving in your mouth the very body of Christ and the very blood of Christ. Uh, you're, you're not eating it in a sort of strange, cannibalistic sort of way. It's a mysterious presence. It's a mystery. And a mystery is uh, always a wonderful way of thinking about it. Think of someone hiding. If someone is hiding, if you're playing a game of hide and seek, if someone is hiding in your house, they're really there. Yeah. You just can't see them, right? It's the same with the Lord's Supper. Christ is really there. You just can't see him. It's okay. bread and wine, but it's also Christ's real presence, his real body, and his real blood, the, the body that was crucified and risen, the blood that was shed for you on that cross are really present there. How does it work? We don't know. It, sure. It's a mystery and we're okay with that. Sometimes you just can't know stuff. Yeah. It's God and he is beyond our understanding. Yeah. How did Jesus walk through locked doors after his resurrection? Right. He did. Who knows? Right. right? But he did. <clears throat> and so we just trust the promise. So that's what it is. The Lord's Supper is the real presence mm -hmm. of Christ. I like that idea about the hide and seek because if somebody is hiding in the house, if you're playing a game of hide and seek with friends mm. and they talk, you hear them. Yeah. You hear oh, their words. Good. Yeah. You know they're present. Mm -hmm. You just may not see them. Yep. And that's fine. Yep. You know, um, but you know that they are still there. Mm -hmm with you. Mm -hmm. And that's good. so it's the same that's kind of really thing, good. right? We still hear Christ's words present in the midst of that meal exactly. and his benefits for us yes. in the midst of that meal. And not just hear him in his presence, right. but actually receive, receive it. it. He's too. really there. Yep, right. exactly. Sure. So that kind of leads into what we're talking about. Though. What are the benefits of Christ's presence so, in the yeah, midst so of this meal? Why does it matter that he's there? If you right. think about this, right. when Christ is walking uh, during his ministry, everywhere he shows up, he comes with blessing. One of my yeah. favorite chapters is uh, Mark chapter 5. If you go to Mark chapter 5, you have this incredible account. At first, it starts with Jesus going into a graveyard where there's a demoniac, mm. a guy possessed mm -hmm. by a lot of demons. Uh, and he's, he's in this sort of Gentile, pagan graveyard. He's a, he's a guy possessed by demons, which means he was probably a Satan worshiper. And Jesus shows up and meets him. And what happens? The demons flee from the man. He sends them away. They actually go into a herd of pigs. And, the and they pigs... actually recognize Jesus yeah, too, right? Yeah, they do. The they recognize knew who he was. They recognize the real presence of Christ there with yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> and they flee. And Christ purifies that guy. He right. drives away the demons. The next scene, right. uh, you have Jesus approached by a man whose daughter's dying. His name is Jairus. Uh, mm -hmm. And he comes to Jesus seeking help for his daughter. And on his way to, to help this dying girl, a woman runs up to Jesus and touches him because she's had a, a bleeding issue for right. years and years and years. Right. She comes into the presence of Jesus and what happens? Healed. She's healed. Right. Then <clears throat> Jesus goes and he finds the dead girl and he, he touches her and he raises her back to life. Now, now what happens with the presence of Christ in all these situations? Nothing but blessing. He drives away the evil. He gives life. He gives salvation. He mm -hmm. brings... He brings uh, he restores that woman to the community. She wasn't allowed to be around people because of the bleeding. Uh, he that's restores right. restoration. Her. Yeah, that's right. There's a restoration. Yeah. So when we even come... the demoniac too, right? I mean, he was restored back into the community. Yeah, yeah they don't and like. And so was the little daughter. She was restored back into the community because now she lives. She's alive. That's right. right. And immediately she gets up and starts serving, which is always great. Too. Oh, that's neat too. Yeah. So you have all these instances where Christ is really present. And he brings blessings with him. Okay. When we come to the Lord's Supper, it's the same thing. Christ comes to us, and first, we receive the forgiveness of sins. In fact, he says to us, 
Uh, take and eat. This is my body given for you, my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. So so you think of... That's right. There's a purpose to it. That's right. When yeah. you eat it and you drink it, the forgiveness of sins is being granted to you. Christ is actually mm -hmm. delivering to you what he won for you on the cross. And whenever there's forgiveness of sins, there's also life and salvation. Mm -hmm. Sin brings death. So when sin is removed, life is given. Sure. Uh, sin brings condemnation and judgment. But whenever sin is forgiven, uh, there is now salvation. Justification is the way we say it. God mm -hmm. declares you righteous and holy because of what Jesus has done for you. So when mm -hmm. you receive the presence of Christ, you are receiving forgiveness and life and salvation. You're just like mm -hmm. the demoniac or the woman or the dead girl. You're receiving gifts and Christ is driving away your sin and your evil and giving you forgiveness and salvation. So when we come and we receive this, that's what's going on. He's showing up, like you said, with a purpose. Mm -hmm. He's present mm -hmm. to forgive you and sustain you into life everlasting. Which would be a, like it's a restoration into the community yep. of the saints. Yes. We talk about that in the creed, right? The communion of saints. Yes. The whole community of all of God's children baptized in his name throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And that, they call it the invisible church. Yes. Right? We, a lot we, of times. Sure, right? we can call it Across that. Across yeah. denominations, yep. kind of the invisible church and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so it's that restoration of forgiveness of sins into that community again. To Now, did we talk about kind of the strengthening of faith in the midst of that Sure, stuff because too? every time you hear, now we want to be, just real quickly, we yeah. want to be a little careful there. Okay. The communion doesn't bring us into the community, but it's what we do oh, that's as the community. The sacrament that brings us into the community is baptism. Is baptism. That's a good clarification. Uh, but now as the community, we receive mm -hmm. the sacrament together. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course then, as, as you just mentioned, and this is, this is very important, that this word sustains our faith. Think about your faith kind of like your body. Mm -hmm. If you don't eat, you're gonna die. <laughs> like this yeah. is to be clear. Yeah. If you don't, yeah. if you starve yourself, you're gonna be very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're eating good, nutritious food, your body is strengthened. When you're feeding on the sacrament, when you're actually eating the body and blood of Christ and hearing in your ears that your sins are forgiven, that Christ is present for you, that you're receiving life and salvation, this strengthens you and this sustains you, it helps carry you into life everlasting. And so uh, it is a strengthening of the faith. Your faith lives not on your own will, not on your own power, not on your own work. Your faith exists because of the word and it okay. lives on the word. Uh, the, the word of God creates faith in our hearts and sustains that faith in our hearts. Okay. So we depend on it. Yeah, it's yeah. a very good, good point, yeah. good point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate that we're able to talk through it because sometimes I'll come up with questions that might be on somebody else's mind yeah, too. And so good. it, it, it does help with that. Um, now, as we talk about all of this stuff, this is how we understand it from scripture mm -hmm. and from our confessions within the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, mm -hmm. right? And so I know there's differences out there sure. though, right? Sure. And we were just talking about the whole community of saints, that invisible church, but as we see it, we see it kind of broken up into denominations. Sure, right. Do all those denominations teach the same thing uh, that we understand from scripture as far as what the Lord's Supper is with Christ's real presence in, under, and with the bread and wine. That's right. Yeah, no. They <laughs> don't. Just okay. straight up. Okay. Uh, in don't. fact, one of the great <laughs> divisions and one of the truly sad divisions yeah. uh, in our church is based around communion. Sure. Different denominations view the sacraments very differently. Okay. Um, and this, and, and so what I want to kind of do Not now, just communion, but I mean, even a baptism lot of things, and everything, right? That it, is correct. Okay. Uh, they view a lot of things differently, but it, it's very interesting to me that if you really want to get at the differences, mm -hmm. study the sacraments. Mm. If you study the sacraments and how different denominations view them, okay. you will see how they view everything. Okay. I, I think you can really encapsulate sure. that. I can make that argument deeper some other time. Sure. sure. But what I kind of want to do is just run through real quickly what some other church bodies see taking place in the sacrament mm -hmm. so we can understand the difference yeah. and, and why it yeah. matters. Yeah. So um, what about Rome, like Roman Catholic Church? The Roman Catholic Church. Okay, now you will hear a lot of times big theological language around the Roman Catholic Church that they b believe in something called uh, transubstantiation. Didn't they do a Christmas album? <laughs> no, that's... That's a Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Oh, right. Yeah, that's different. <laughs> very epic nonetheless. Wow. Well well done. The transubstantiation, think about it. So you have trans, something okay. changing, okay. and substantiation, the substance. Okay. They believe that when you okay. go to the Lord's Supper, uh, Christ is not only really present there, it's no longer bread. The bread is changed into Christ's body. Ah. And it's no longer wine. 
it's changed into actual blood. Now, on the surface level, that's not that terrible of a view. The, the problem okay. is the word says when you eat the bread or you drink the wine, right. you, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So the scripture still calls it bread and wine. So they're kind of taking it one step further. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, okay. The real but problem... But then, like, what do you do afterwards? Well, well that becomes another, very complicated. Yeah, I know that's another We'll discussion. get to that at some other point. Okay. Uh, but the real problem with the Roman view is this, is they believe that when they go to the sacrament, the priest, and they call him a priest, mm. the priest will take the bread and wine, which are now the body and blood of Christ, and they will offer it, in a sense, back up to God, and it's called the sacrifice of the Mass. Oh, and they're offering yeah. up to God now what they would call a bloodless sacrifice. Um, so for them, the mo now think about it this way, the movement for the Roman Catholic view is that we are doing something for God. The priest is mm. doing something for God, and we're receiving some benefit from it, but the work is going up. Okay, so the work is going up. up. And I think this okay. is actually the best way to distinguish between the Lutheran view and the other views. What direction does the sacrament go? Sure, for okay. For us, the sacrament comes down. Okay. Here comes Jesus in his body. Here comes Jesus with his blood to give to you. It's a, it's a downward movement from uh -huh. God to us. Pure gift. Sure. Grace. Sure. In Rome, movement's up. It's, it's a work. work. It's okay. a performance. Okay. Um, similarly, interestingly enough, in some of the non-denominational or Baptist mm -hmm. views... Kind of the Reformed... No, Baptist. I'll get to the Reformed, oh, in, reformed a second. in a bit. Okay, yeah, so the Baptist a, views. Yeah, the Baptist views, this, this would be the view what we would call the memorialist view. Okay. And the memorialist, if you think about this, they remember. Jesus says, do this in remembrance sure. of me. Yeah. They will suggest that this sacrament that Jesus gives is not a sacrament. They won't call it that. They'll okay. call it an ordinance, a command. Okay. So already we see that it's not a gift, but it's a word. Right. Um, and they'll say that uh, when you go to the supper, the main thing taking place there is you remembering what Jesus has done for you. It's a work again. G again. Now, to be real. Other side of the spectrum. That's right. Exactly right. Yeah. You just kind of go the other direction right. as far away right. from the Roman view as possible. So... And, and, and should you remember the Lord's death when you go to the supper? Well, sure. Of course. Of yeah. course you should. Yeah. But if that's all you're doing, if all you're doing is remembering something, you've now lost the gospel or the gift aspect of it, and you're focused more on your mm. thinking. Am I meditating rightly? Mm -hmm. Am I focusing rightly? Am I remembering rightly? Now all the comfort is gone. Mm -hmm. The third view I want to look at, and it's a okay. little more nuanced, but we do know a number of people, especially in our area, yeah. from what we call the Reformed Church or the Calvinist tradition. Right, okay. And okay. they will suggest that you spirit, now this can sound a little involved, but you spiritually receive the body and blood of Christ. Not okay. The, not the physical so body. Not and physically, blood, but spiritually. But you re receive the spiritual body and blood of Christ. Okay. If you have faith. So How do you, you know if you have faith? That's a great question. Okay. If you have faith, then your soul feasts on the body and blood of Christ in the presence of God in heaven. That's that sounds how they, beautiful. It's, it's a very nice theology. And yeah. it's, theologically, it's, it's really quite a, a remarkable explanation. Yeah. It's just it's not in the Bible. <laughs> it's just oh, the well, text, I mean, there's that. The text doesn't <laughs> say it. And the main emphasis now is not what God is giving... Right. but what you are believing. Huh. So so now, once again, the focus and the emphasis is on my faith. Uh, with the Baptist view, the, the focus is on my remembering, and in the Catholic view, it's on m the priest sacrificing. Everything is going upwards. Okay, Focusing yeah, all up three towards of God. Okay. Our view is Christ is coming down and giving us a gift. The emphasis, then, is not on me, but mm -hmm. on Christ. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. It's Christ's work. Yes. On our behalf. Exactly right. Okay. So so for us, it is 100% the work of God. And you receive that body and blood of Christ, whether you have faith or not. Oh, so your belief in it doesn't make a difference. If, uh, it doesn't make a difference as to whether or not Christ is there. Because it's his promise. Right. It's his doing. If you don't believe it, it's not good news. Okay. It could be harmful for you. But we'll talk about that in the next In the episode. next video? Mm -hmm. Okay, great, yeah. great. So why, why does any of this matter? Why does it matter whether or not Christ is present in that meal? Mm -hmm. And why 
just that. Why does that matter? Right. If Christ is not present, if mm -hmm. we go and have one of these other views, mm -hmm. we are removing, I believe, the comfort of the, pr of the promise. Okay. If we're making it about me mm -hmm. and my memory and my performance and my faith, mm -hmm. uh, then I'm focused on me. Sure. If instead it's focused on Jesus saying, this is my body given for you, this is my blood shed for you, mm -hmm. now you're simply receiving a gift and there's forgiveness and there's life and salvation. If it's purely a memorial meal, mm -hmm. there's no forgiveness there, there's no life or salvation there. Mm. It's just a memory of what God has done. Um, it seems if, to take us back to that conversation of law and gospel. It does, it does. Let okay. me get back to that in a second. Sure, sure. If, um, if it's about my faith, uh -huh. then it's the body and blood of Christ, maybe, for me. But what if my faith is weak? What if I don't know about my faith? And now I'm focused on my faith and not the word that gives me faith. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, if it's focused on the priest's sacrifice, um, well, then, I mean, we've got all kinds of a load of issues there. At mm -hmm. least there, uh, you'll be able to find some hope of forgiveness there when you mm -hmm. receive something from Jesus, because they do believe he's truly present. Mm -hmm. uh, yet, nonetheless, the significant problem is that they've made it into a work and not a promise. It sure. depends on how good and holy I am, not on how gracious and forgiving God is. So God. all of these kind of come, and it does come back to law and gospel. Are you okay. viewing the sacrament, as you asked a second ago, yeah. This are you viewing the sacrament as a law and a command or as a gift and a promise? Does it have to be an either or? It doesn't necessarily have to be an either or, but the way you, I think we talked about this yeah, before. Because we talked about a sacrament being a command instituted by God. Yeah, take and eat, take yeah, and drink. Take and eat, take and drink. But if we split it apart, it seems like it's almost both of them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To some extent. Yeah, so we don't want to reduce it to just being a law. Right, um, right. It is, it is in a sense, pure gift. Even the command in this sense, yeah. is part of the gift. Like we said okay, before, sure. it's sure. like Christmas morning saying, take this, this present has your name on it, yeah. right? Take this, yeah. this now is Christ's body and blood with his name on it right. for you. So right. uh, it is pure gift and mercy mm -hmm. uh, when you receive it, trusting in the words of Christ. Gotcha. And so uh, so the emphasis for us is on the words yeah. and on the gift. Yeah, yeah, on the gospel side. The gospel of it. Yeah, Jesus absolutely. giving himself to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and kind of a follow-up question why this matters uh, how, kind of makes a difference on how we read the Bible, too. Because down at the bottom here, so it's the test of how we read the Bible. Do we trust the Word for what it says? Or yeah. do we doubt how yeah. do we interpret that kind of stuff, Yeah, right? this, this kind of gets into a larger conversation. Okay. Uh, but it is worth pointing out that when we read the Bible, do we go at it trusting what Jesus says as he says it? Mm. Or do we feel like we have to explain it and figure it out. Are we going to let reason dictate how we understand Christ's words? Are we going to let Christ's words dictate our reason? So when it comes to the There's Lord's Supper... a fine Supper, line between some of those. Yeah, huh? that's right. Well, yeah, it gets yeah. kind of tricky. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to the Lord's Supper, the question is, am I going to trust what Jesus says? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to try and have to figure it out with math and science? Gotcha. You know, if Jesus is in heaven, how can he be in the sacrament? I don't know. But if he says it, turns out he's God and what he says is true. The one who says, as you said in the last uh -huh. conversation, uh, the one who says, let there be light, the one who says, uh, your sins are forgiven, has now said, this is my body, this is my blood. Uh, what he says is truth. So we trust it. Even if we can't explain it, mm -hmm. we trust it, mm -hmm. and that it's for our good. And gotcha. So that's, that's kind of where uh, I think that's an important distinction yeah. to have. Uh, we're letting Christ's words decide what this is and not our reason. Gotcha, gotcha. I think that might be enough to wrestle with for today. I think so too. That's pretty good. That's that's a great. That's a lot of stuff. That's yeah. a lot of stuff to handle. Uh, as always, as you watch these videos, if questions come up in your mind, write them down, email them, text them one way or another to Pastor and myself, uh, and let's talk about. It. You know, uh, we'd love to talk more with you about it. Don't just take these videos and say, that's it, now I know everything. <laughs> we don't know everything, but a lot can happen in conversation right. as we work through God's Word together. Because He was, God's Word was never set aside for one person to interpret by themselves, all by themselves. It was meant to be within the community of God's family, right. which you as a baptized child of God are part of that community. So let's continue the conversation about all of these things and how God works for the benefit of His 
creation through Christ. Thank Sound you. Sound good? Sounds good to me. All right. See you next time. God's peace, guys. Thank you.